Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY sailboat refit video here aboard good old Athena. My goal for this week is to start applying primer to the areas of the hull that I've fared and I also want to get the new steering pedestal assembled and installed up in the cockpit. In case you're new to my channel, this lovely looking boat here is Athena. She's a 1987 Warrior 38 that I'm about four years into refitting. I've replaced the entire deck. I've done a very extensive osmosis treatment. I've reinforced the structural members underneath the cabin sole and I've also rebuilt most of the interior. A couple of months ago, I glassed over the deck hull joint to seal it. Since then, I've been busy fairing the hull whenever the weather has allowed it. I've finally arrived at the intersection between wanting a spiffy result and not being able to stomach the thought of spending another second fairing the hull. I've got just shy of a hundred hours into the hull by now, and it's hard with fairing because you can always just spend a little bit more time to get the result a little bit more perfect, but you gotta draw the line somewhere. And I think this line is here for me. I've spent the last three days going over everything again and again to make sure that I'm ready for that first coat of primer. And I think we're there, but I'm not gonna be able to apply it today. We're about to get a bunch of rain for the next couple of days, but that's okay. That means I can spend some time here in the workshop putting together the steering pedestal. This is the new engine control housing for the steering pedestal. And this is the old one. This was starting to look a little bit shabby. There's a bunch of corrosion here. The plate that was on the back here was no longer attached. So yeah, I figured it was time to just replace this. The column was actually in pretty good shape. There was only a tiny bit of corrosion. So I decided to reuse it. And that brings us to all of these shiny new parts here. There's gonna be a tiny bit of assembly required. I'm also gonna have to countersink some holes here. But other than that, it should all just bolt together. There's a tiny challenge in the fact that the chuck on the drill press is too large to fit in here. So I'm gonna have to countersink these by hand. As you can see, these two are starting to look a lot more alike. I used a tiny dab of Sigaflex here in between the top plate and the engine control housing just to make sure water doesn't start seeping in. I'm actually getting a little bit ahead of myself because before I start assembling all the shiny bits for the steering pedestal, maybe I ought to clean and assemble the guts of the steering pedestal. These are said guts, carefully put away a few years back when I removed the steering pedestal. I've ordered a new brake housing because the old one was cracked and I've also ordered a single new bearing, but other than that, this is all original. Despite Athena being over 30 years old and having done one circumnavigation, most of the guts of the steering pedestal look, well, basically pristine. A quick wipe with some brake cleaner and a bit of fresh grease. And I think these parts are gonna be ready for another circumnavigation. Maybe pristine is kind of pushing it, but these parts are definitely serviceable and they're gonna be good for many, many years to come. This is the old bearing that I'm replacing and here are two identical new ones. I got two because the shipping was way more expensive than the bearing, so it made sense just to get two and carry one as a spare part. Let's see if I can remember how this thing goes back together again because it's been a few years since I took it apart. But if memory serves, it's pretty straightforward. The column is aluminum and I'm gonna be using a bunch of stainless steel fasteners to secure stuff to it. And wherever I'm combining the two, I'm gonna use a little dab of this stuff. This is an anti-corrosive jointing compound. There are a bunch of different products that all serve the same purpose. I've never used this particular one before, but I'm assuming it's perfectly fine. Having never used this before, all I can really say about it is that it's got a delightful yellow color. There's an O-ring hiding in here, and I'm just gonna give that a tiny dab of lube before we get to the shoving. Okay, let's just get this in here. After a little bit of persuasion, it all worked out. As you can see, it's in there now and it's rotating nicely. Before I go any further with the assembly, I'm gonna run this piece of line here up through the column, and you guys will see what this is for a little bit later. Now, if memory serves, this goes on facing down. And I've got a little key here. The only thing that's left now is to fit the new brake housing. 
and uh, I think it goes uh, this way around. It was surprisingly easy to put this thing back together. I know it may seem like a small thing to put the steering pedestal back together and get it installed out in the cockpit, but it is an absolutely crucial thing for me to do before I can put Athena back in the water. I better go ahead and update my little Kanban or scrum board here. So these are the two tasks I'm gonna be working on this week. That is painting the hull and rebuilding the pedestal. It is Friday afternoon. Doing major projects on the exterior of your boat out in the open during the summer here in Denmark is a great way to drive yourself nuts. It was supposed to be perfect for painting tomorrow. Not a lot of wind, nice and dry, perfect. But now it looks like it's possibly gonna rain. I don't know. We'll uh, see what happens tomorrow. There are two things I would like to get done today. I wanna drill and fill the holes for the pedestal here in the cockpit. And I also wanna clean and prep the hull for paint. When I removed the pedestal, I placed this little piece of acrylic here over the hole to keep water out of the boat. And that's worked surprisingly well. I have scraped away the bulk of the butyl tape and the little bit that's left over I'm just going to remove with a little bit of white spirits. The little hole that's out here might end up being a little bit of a problem. I'd totally forgotten about it. It's from the old guardrail and the new guardrail is just a little bit wider than the old one. So this might not line up. This is turning into a roller coaster of surprises. I'd forgotten about this hole, and I'd also forgotten that I'd already created oversized holes and filled them with lignite epoxy for the four bolts of the column. As you can see, there's absolutely no wooden core exposed in here. It's just thickened epoxy. And I've already sealed the core that's exposed here with just some regular unthickened epoxy. Let's do a little dry fit to see if the hole lines up. The hole isn't lined up perfect, but it's pretty close. The width of this flange is seven millimeters and it turns out I've got five millimeters to seal up against here. I am gonna be drilling and filling a bunch of other holes so I might as well just fill this and drill a new hole a little bit further in so that I've got the full seven millimeters to seal up against. <laughs> I've taped the underside of all the holes and here I've got a little bit of epoxy thickened with 406 and some chopped up fiberglass. For holes as large as the two larger holes, these ones here, there's certainly an argument that you don't need to drill, fill and drill them. You could just coat the inside with epoxy. The only reason I'm doing it this way is just to save myself a little bit of time. It takes more than one coat of epoxy to seal wood. So if I want to seal those larger holes without using thickened epoxy, I'd have to go over it multiple times and doing it this way is just quicker. I'm going to pretend that the weather is not gonna be a challenge tomorrow and go ahead and get the hull prepped for paint. I wanna make sure that there are no contaminants on the hull. So no dust, no grease, no freaking bird poop, nothing like that. The TDS for the primer I'm using specifically mentions not to to use any kind of solvent to wipe down areas that have been fared. So I'll use water, a little bit of degreaser soap, a scotch bright pad and some elbow grease. I've been told that it is very important that I get rid of all the soap. So I'll scrub down one section, then hose it down before moving on to the next section. Good morning guys, it is Saturday morning. When I got here this morning, there was a lot of dew on the hull. So the very first thing I did was just to wipe that down to give the hull a chance to dry. It's still supposed to rain today, but it's not supposed to start until four or five o'clock in the afternoon. So that should leave me enough time to apply a coat of epoxy primer and have that cure enough that it doesn't matter if it gets wet. 
but I am limited to just applying a single coat today. I want to give the porous fairing compound on the hull a couple of hours to just make sure that it's nice and dry before I start painting. And uh, why don't I use that time to get started installing the steering pedestal? There is, of course, also a bunch of dew here in the cockpit. And as you might be able to see, some of it is a little discolored in these two areas. That's just from the amine brush that's formed when the epoxy cured. Everything is now nice and flat, so we hopefully have a good surface to seal up against. The very last thing I'm going to do before I install the column is just to give these holes a little bit of a bevel. I've covered the heads of all the bolts here in a little bit of butyl before I put them in place. I do think there might be an argument for using something that's a little bit more resistant to chemicals for sealing this in the cockpit, but I think we'll be okay. I've got the entire base sealed and I've got a little blob of butyl around each of the bolts. So I think we're ready to smush this thing into place. Please excuse the dust in here, but now it is just a matter of getting the bolts tightened down. I've checked the fairing compound on the hull and it seems nice and dry. So I'm gonna hurry up and apply the epoxy primer so that it'll have a chance to cure before it starts raining. And that's it. I am officially done fairing and into the painting stage. I am so freaking excited. I didn't find any major issues while applying the primer. There were a couple of pinholes, but that's no big deal. We'll deal with that next week. I made life a little bit harder on myself than I had to when applying the primer because I ended up using some of these mohair rollers here to apply it. That's not my favorite roller, but all the foam rollers I had here in the workshop, they just simply disintegrate at the site of Interprime 820. I've ordered some more appropriate foam rollers and they're on their way here. They just didn't quite make it for the weekend and I really wanted to apply the first coat of primer in this week's video. In terms of painting, next week is maybe not the best week because it looks like we're going to get a lot of rain again, but over the next couple of weeks, whenever it's not raining, I'm going to be applying five additional coats of the Interprime 820. But only to the areas that I have fared. The job of that primer is to protect the fairing compound. And then on top of that primer is going to go undercoat. And then on top of that is going to go Perfection Pro. I should have a couple of hours before it starts raining. And it would be really cool to do a test fit of the entire steering pedestal. I'm using the exact same process I used for the column. I've applied a bit of butyl tape to both of the feet. I've tightened the four bolts and as you can see, there's plenty of butyl squeezing out. I'll leave it like this for a couple of weeks, then I'll come back, tighten the bolts, and I'll keep doing that until no more butyl squeezes out. One of the reasons I wanted to replace at least parts of the steering pedestal was because of the old guardrail. While sailing Athena home from Scotland, I remember moving around in the cockpit and grabbing the old guardrail, and this side over here just tore away. That's not really good. The new one should be much, much sturdier. And there it is, the brand new steering pedestal. I think this thing looks ridiculously spiffy. This flat section here is to secure a table that can flip up so that we'll have a table here in the cockpit. Before I can do the final, final installation of the steering pedestal and run the engine control cables and all of that stuff, I do need a little laser cut gasket that's going to sit in between the top plate and the column and also some o-rings to seal around the guardrail. The o-rings are pretty straightforward. They're on their way here, but the laser cut gasket, it turns out that place have a minimum order of $80, which means I'd have to order five of those gaskets and I only really need one. So I'm going to hold off on ordering that until I know the exact dimensions of the gaskets I need for the tanks for the forward cabin. Speaking of the forward cabin, Cabin, with the weather forecast the way it's supposed to be for next week, I don't know how much painting I'll be able to do. 
but I could get started roughing out this area for the freezer. But before I get too much stuff built here, it would be nice to finish patching these three old holes. As you can see, I've already laid up glass on the outside of the hull, so I just need to grind a bevel on these and lay up glass on the inside of the hull. I bet some of you guys thought I was going to leave you hanging without any kind of glorious sanding this week, but no, 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 it is time to get itchy. <laughs> Ta-da! That is three holes patched. Now, if we get a lot of rain next week, I can always move ahead with building the freezer area. That's a nice backup to have. It's time to do something I've been looking forward to for a very long time, and that is to move this piece of paper, which is the task that represents fairing the hull, into the done column. The pedestal is also rebuilt. It's not finally assembled yet, but it is functional, and that's really all we need to get the boat back in the water. There are still a lot of tasks over here in the to-do column on the left side, but hopefully over the next three months, those will all migrate over here in the done column so I can get the boat back in the water. I was hoping I could spend the last couple of minutes in this video to figure out the exact dimensions of the mini bulwark slash tow rail. I've even got some little pieces of wood here to use to figure out the height. But uh, yeah, it's raining outside, so I think we're going to save this until next week. Before ending this video, I just want to mention that I am aware that the corners on the top plate of the pedestal look very pointy or sharp. And I'm sure I'm going to get some comments about that. But I don't think it's going to be an issue because of the wheel and because of the table. I just wanted to mention that in the video instead of having to type out the same comment a bunch of times. And that is going to be it for this week's video. I am so freaking excited to be done fairing. I spent a lot of time this week fairing, but it is finally done. And that is very exciting. I hope to see all of you guys back here at Athena for hopefully a bunch of painting next week. But uh, yeah, as always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.